In this video, I'm going to be telling you the most profitable e-commerce growth strategy in 2024. And no, I'm not going to be telling you to spend thousands more on TikTok ads or Facebook ads, but to increase your website conversions by a measly 0.1%. And while pretty much every YouTube guru is gonna tell you to optimize your ad creatives or your strategy, that's not solving the real problem. The problem is that your paid ad advertising is gonna to come to your site and then never come back. So you're not getting the most bang for your buck. But in this video, I'm going to be revealing to you the most effective e-commerce growth strategy in 2024 that's gonna allow you to predictably grow your e-commerce brand month over month without having to spam discounts or send any extra money to Zuckerberg. Quick disclaimer, but this is gonna be a slightly longer YouTube video than normal. So if you aren't willing to invest 20 to 30 minutes into your e-commerce brand, then you're probably just not going to make it and you can click off now. So adios. And now that we have only the real winners left, now we can get straight into it. I know it's tempting to just want to go over to TikTok or Facebook, put some ads up, pump some cash into it and watch the website traffic numbers go up. It is super exciting and super fun to watch all these people come visit your site with the hopes that some of them are going to buy. But to be quite honest, you're just gonna be let down. In 2024, it's becoming increasingly difficult to get people to buy on your site the first time they visit. With so many e-commerce stores popping up every day thanks to Shopify and dropshipping, the consumer has many, many options to choose from. Mix that with the number of internet scams out there, it is very hard to have the modern customer just click on an ad, visit your site, and purchase right on the spot, which is exactly why you need quality conversion and retention systems in place, such as pop-up forms and email and SMS marketing. These will lower your cost of acquisition since you don't need to be paying as much on retargeting ads, they'll increase your customer LTV, increase your brand recognition, and allow you to command your niche's mind share, since you're always going to be top of mind. For example, if you have a good pop-up form installed asking for someone's email address, you're going to be able to convert 6 to 12% of your total site viewers from people who maybe have shown a little bit of interest in your brand, but they're not quite ready to pull the trigger. You can then spend the next one to two weeks educating them on your brand and your products to eventually guide them into a purchasing decision at the correct and optimal conversion point. And that window of conversions is usually around that seven to 10 to 14 day mark. For the people who do purchase, you're able to retain them by offering them valuable content and giving them promotional offers over time. With each piece of value that you provide, you increase the loyalty to your brand and you increase the likelihood that the next time that your customer thinks about your product and where they're gonna shop for it, they're just gonna automatically go to you rather than go shop around and look at new options. So this brings up the question, how do you get started with email marketing? Now you can't send emails to a list if you're not using an ESP, which is an email service provider. These are softwares that allow you to design your emails, send out your emails to your list, and look at your list data over time. Now you don't wanna overcomplicate this, just use Klaviyo. I've used them all, MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, Drip, OmniSend, HubSpot, and Klaviyo just blows them all out of the water. It's the only true option for e-commerce brands. And Klaviyo integrates with Shopify very smoothly and you can set this up in less than a day. Right when you create your Klaviyo account, they're gonna have an easy to follow guide process to getting your Shopify and your Klaviyo integrated. They have a great support team and they're gonna be able to answer any of the questions in the integration process, which you may have. Again, this really shouldn't take more than a day. Now that you have things integrated, how do you grow your email list? Now there are two main ways to grow your email list. The first one is with post-purchase marketing opt-ins and the second is with pop-up forms. Post-purchase opt-ins are super simple and they can be done right in Shopify. You can add a checkbox in the Shopify post-purchase page asking if somebody is open to receiving marketing emails in the future. If you even wanna get more aggressive, you can have this checkbox automatically clicked so that anybody who purchases has to manually uncheck it. Now the most effective and scalable way to grow your email list is with pop-up forms. Now pop-up forms have a fine line because you don't want to be intrusive, but there are many ways around that. A good form that people actually enjoy will convert 6 to 12% of your website viewers into email subscribers. So say if you have 50,000 website visitors, you can predictably get 3,000 to 6,000 of them every month to join your email list. Now you can create solid forms right inside of Klaviyo just by going to the sign up forms tab. Here's how you install it. All right, so inside of Klaviyo, you can see this tab on the left side here called sign up forms. This is what's going to house all your forms. If you go in the top right corner to create sign up form, there are some great templates that you can use to start off with. So here's some of the templates that they have. I recommend starting with this one. This is kind of just gonna give you the base overview and the essentials. So you just need to set up what lists you wanna add the subscribers to. This is perfect and you can create form and it's gonna pop out the examples here. So up here at the top, you have the different steps of the form. If somebody opts in right here, they're gonna then get sent SMS and then they're gonna get sent the success page. Right off the bat to edit, you have things right here. So you have targeting and behavior. I highly recommend editing the show based on rules. So it's not just popping up right when someone visits the site. That can be very intrusive. So I recommend switching this to somewhere around 
around six to 12 seconds. I usually start with six seconds. And then you're gonna wanna create separate forms for mobile and desktop. So right here, you can say that this is the desktop form and only show it on desktop. So nobody on mobile is getting this type of layout. Cause again, you need to be optimized based on the device. And then over here in styles, you can fix if you want it to be a pop-up full page, just a fly out for example, and you can customize pretty much anything you want. Here are a couple quick tips with pop-up forms to keep in mind. Again, be sure that you're setting the trigger to be six to 12 seconds upon page load. Two, make sure you actually have a strong offer so people actually want to join your list. Something like 1% off or $1 off isn't gonna get many opt-ins. Three, use as little words as possible in your form. The more words you add, the more wary somebody is of joining. By this, I literally mean having something as simple as, do you want 15% off? And then ask for the email address and then the button that says submit. Anything more than that is a waste of space. And four, make it easy for somebody to fill out. If you're asking somebody for their first name, their last name, their birthday, their social security number, nobody wants to fill that out, especially if it's all shown at them on the first step. Make it super easy for somebody to fill out by just asking for their email address. If you care about the other stuff, then you can find that out from them after they join the email list. Three, now we're gonna talk about campaign strategy. Now there are two types of emails. You have campaigns and you have flows. Campaigns are the typical emails you think of when you think of email marketing. These are the email blasts that are sent to your whole entire list on a specific day and a specific time. These are things like flash sales, new product releases. Flows are different in that they don't have a specific day or time that they are sent. Rather, they're a series of emails that get turned active and sent to somebody after they complete a specified action. These are things like the welcome flow, the browse abandonment flow, the card abandonment flow, and the post purchase flow. Your revenue between the two different types of emails, campaigns and flows, should be split pretty evenly around 50-50. So first, we'll talk briefly about about campaigns. Be real with yourself here and how much time you think you can put into your email list. You wanna establish what kind of cadence your email campaigns will be sent. You should at least be sending one to two times a week if you wanna stay top of mind with your customer. We see the most success with our clients sending three to five value-based campaigns per week, but for smaller teams and for smaller lists, this could be a little bit out of reach. So choose your cadence, whatever it may be, and stick to it religiously. Figure out what type of content you wanna be sending. You wanna be able to send valuable content while at the same time advertising your products. This could be recipe emails if you sell food Food products or workout plans if you sell athletic gear or maybe even outfit inspiration if you sell clothes. A great way to get campaign ideas is by asking ChatGPT. Just give ChatGPT your ideal client profile and ask them to provide a list of 10 to 20 email campaign ideas that are complete content and value based. Some examples of some of these emails you can send are things like us versus them, testimonial emails, blog emails, product spotlights, customer stories, myths versus facts, and things like product restocks. Anytime you run a motion, you also want to be sure that you're sending a few reminders to your email list, that they stay engaged over time and are reminded that, hey, you're in the first to know about these deals. Now here's how to send campaigns inside of Klaviyo. So once you're inside of Klaviyo, you just want to go to the campaigns tabs right here. You can see there's nothing here because it's a fresh account. Just go to create campaign in the top corner. You can just leave this empty, whatever campaign name you want to do. The date isn't necessary because you don't really have to set anything up right now, but you just click email and then save and continue. Once it's loaded, you will see everything here. You just want to make sure that you have your recipients locked in. Right here, we'll just say newsletter. If there's any segment that you don't want to send to, such as suppressed profiles, you just want to click the don't send to option here. Once everything looks good on this side of things, you want to continue to content. This is where you're going to put your subject line in your preview text. So we can have our subject line here. So maybe something like hidden flash sale live preview text, such as an exclusive sneak peek. And then you have a couple options here for how you want your email to look. You have text only and drag and drop. These are really the only things that you have to do unless you're using custom coded emails. But most often than not, you're just going to use a drag and drop. Now what we do at our agency is we design our emails separately on Figma, which allows us to design our emails and make them really pretty. But if you're smaller, then it's okay to use use Klaviyo templates and build right inside of Klaviyo. You can see there are a ton of templates here that you can choose from. You can go on ahead and edit right inside and I'll show you exactly how that looks. So this is how it looks when you're inside of Klaviyo editing. You have images here and then you have text that you can edit, do all these options. And then you have buttons, which are going to do an action for you. Always make sure that you have a URL to where you want the button to lead to. 
and you can see how it looks like on desktop up here versus mobile right here. You can customize it to be a little bit different. Klaviyo is super simple. If you want to add different sections, you can just look at these different blocks. You have images and you just drag and drop. You have text, you have buttons. Super simple to get the hang of and they made their interface super clean. So especially if you're just using basic or templatized designs, this is going to be a great place to start. Now with email campaigns, you want to be planning ahead and be building out a calendar with all of your campaigns so you can see the strategy on a wide lens. Here's a real example of a campaign calendar that I've used for one of our clients. So make sure that you're looking at your campaigns on a wide lens so you can track how often you're sending promotional campaigns versus nurture-based campaigns. And you wanna have a good balance between the two. And number four, we're talking about how to create email flows. Flows take a bit more work and they have a little bit more technical setup inside of Klaviyo. Fortunately, Klaviyo makes it real easy for you. Again, flows are the series of emails that get triggered to fire based off of a customer's specific actions. These are your main flows, especially when starting out, that you wanna have established. First is the welcome flow after somebody joins your email list. Two is your browse abandon flow after somebody views a product but didn't actually buy it. Three, we have the cart abandon and the checkout abandon flows. I just mix those two together. That's if somebody leaves a cart or they leaves checkout after they were going to purchase. And then four, we have the post purchase flow, which is essentially thank you email and then a couple other emails educating them about the product that they just bought. After that, you can add more advanced flows such as the win back flow, the cross sell flow, upsell, etc. Now let's go over how to set these up inside of Klaviyo. All right, so just like before, you want to go to the flows tab inside of Klaviyo then under flows you can see your past ones but right now we are going to be creating a flow so let's just go to the top right corner here and then you'll have a bunch of different templates from Klaviyo so for this first one let's start out with the welcome flow so you have a ton of different options here or you can create from scratch we have different categories right here and if you click on them you can see what ones they recommend like happy birthday welcome series this type of welcome series customer versus non-customer standard or happy birthday with email and SMS so for this one we are just going to start with the welcome series standard this is a good starting point for any brand just starting out this is what's important here the trigger when is somebody entering this so when somebody is added to the newsletter list they are going to receive these emails let's create the flow now this is what it looks like inside of the flow and this is going to be the same across all flows here you have the trigger up top right here you can make filters to prevent somebody from receiving any of these emails this is a little bit more advanced but typically for something like a welcome flow you want to set up a filter and set up a condition to where if somebody places an order, you want to make sure that anybody who receiving these emails has placed orders zero times over all time because this is the welcome flow. Like if somebody bought after this first email, they're not going to receive the rest. But inside of here, you can see the emails here on the left and you can go on ahead and edit. And it's going to look exactly like the campaigns. You have your subject lines, your preview text, and then your email. And you can go in and customize this. And then we are going to set time differences so somebody can go through through a whole entire progression of emails. You can separate them right here with these time differences. You just drag over a time delay right here and then it'll edit. You can also even mix in SMS. You can do more advanced stuff such as updating profile properties, notifications, webhooks, things like that. But what's really important and what you really wanna use is conditional splits. Say you wanted to make a test on this email, you can do that right here just by going to the random sample option and include 50% of people. And what's gonna happen now is 50% of the people who enter at that point are going to go to this side and half will go to this side. If you wanted to make a test on say the subject line, you can just clone this email drag it here and then make sure that you connect these so that after somebody goes through they meet back and then you can edit the subject line right here check us out on insta and then you can have the test and then review the numbers after say a week you can do all sorts of fun stuff with conditional splits more than just testing you can split based off what somebody has done maybe for people who haven't bought from your brand before you want to send them a discount so then you can make a split what someone has done have they bought from your brand before has placed order at least once over all time yes they're going to get sent this and this will have a discount and then no you can clone the email move it here and send them the same email but without the discount so that's the welcome series again i usually like to have 8 to 12 emails and now you can do the same thing for all the other flows that i mentioned before so just the abandoned cart browse abandon anything like that and that's the functionality with flows just if you want to change the flow to have different triggers such as an abandoned cart or browse abandoned flow you can just go here and navigate towards any one of these goals 
So if you're wondering what types of emails should I be sending in these flows, this is the exact base outline that I've used to set up the initial flows for a client that eventually generated over $1 million. So you can see here at the top, you have the different email flows with the different triggers, and then there are time delays, and then what kind of email we are sending right there. So go ahead and use this for yourself. Again, these are only six of the flows. We usually set up anywhere from eight to 12 right off the bat with six to 12 emails in each. Again, for cart and checkout abandon, I recommend having something as long as an eight email flow. And that leads us then to SMS marketing. SMS marketing is actually very simple. It's very similar to email, except you need to remove all fluff and condense it much more. Keep everything quick and concise and only send what is necessary. SMS marketing is a bit more intrusive and some people can get more annoyed with SMS marketing than email. So you wanna be mindful of that. For campaigns, you should really only be sending messages on exclusive sales, new product releases, or anything important. I really don't recommend sending more than one to two campaigns per week. We usually go with two per week just because we wanna be mindful of your list. Even with your flows, you wanna be much shorter. I typically recommend only starting out with four or SMS flows, and that's gonna be the welcome flow, which we should have two messages within them. The first one, welcoming them in and giving them the discount if you gave them one. And the second one, just being a reminder, hey, this is expiring. Then you want the browse abandon flow. So just a quick message saying, hey, looks like you left something behind. Third, abandoned cart and abandoned checkout flows, which is the same sort of thing as the browse abandon flow, but just wanna say, hey, you left these items in your cart. Do you wanna purchase? And then four, post purchase, usually around one to two messages. This is where you can send a thank you, or you can also send an upsell and a cross sell. Just try to reduce your costs by staying under one SMS send. So how SMS marketing billing works is that you get paid the longer your messages are. So for example, if you stay under 165 characters, you're only going to get charged for one SMS. If you go over, you're going to get charged for two SMS. And if you go double the one SMS, you're going to have to pay for three. I also wouldn't recommend sending things like MMS, which are SMS messages, but with images or GIFs, because those cost 3.5 times more. And usually by including that picture, it's not going to generate three and a half times more revenue. So I always recommend in terms of getting the most bang for your buck, only sending one SMS messages. In terms of setting up inside of Klaviyo, it is the exact same as email campaigns. You just change the option to be SMS. The same can be said with flows. You just drag the SMS option into the flow and you'll now have an SMS send to anybody who enters. So you can just go to campaigns here on the left side. You just go to SMS and here's what it looks like to edit the SMS. Be sure that you have the correct segments in place and you're sending to the right people and you have the correct exclusions. And here's how it looks inside. You see what I mean here about your character characters, 160, that is the mark for one SMS. If you go over, it's going to be two SMS. So you can see, I just typed up a message here, just saying we just added these new items, hurry, they won't be available for long, and then shop now. You can see that Klaviyo, even though I use nike.com, it's gonna automatically create a special link for you. This, in most cases, is going to reduce the amount of characters in your message, which is good, so this is perfect. But you can see here, I went over one SMS. We can reduce this even more to try to get the cost under, so maybe we'd edit to that. And then boom, we're under one SMS and we're only gonna get charged for that. And then once you're set here, just check your data going on here, make sure your credits are okay, change to only United States if that's what you wanna do, and then you can schedule or send it out to go. For SMS, remember, only send important messages because you don't wanna annoy your list. SMS should contribute to around 10 to 20% of your store's total revenue. Because these are going to be the people who actually care about your stuff. They're only the ones that are gonna stay subscribed. So they're usually the first to buy your items. Make sure to also include some exclusive deals inside of your SMS list so that they feel special and they wanna stay subscribed. So that's the best e-commerce growth strategy for 2024. Every single e-commerce store out there needs to have a rock solid email and SMS system set up. Now you can take everything that I've showed you in this video and apply it to your e-commerce store if you want but you'll likely run into a ton of roadblocks along the way. And that's not just setting up the flows that I showed you, also optimizing your email deliverability, learning direct response copy, how to actually design your emails, conversion rate optimization, testing over time, everything like that. Plus, you and your team are likely also spending hours upon hours of your day working on other parts of the business. In 
turning your energy away from other things such as media buying or any e-commerce logistics stuff can result in underperformance in those areas. So if you're an e-commerce store doing above $50,000 a month, you can go to the link in my bio to book a call and we can see if we could help you. Also, you can click on this video over here if you wanna see the only e-commerce email marketing guide you'll ever need. I explain exactly how and the exact strategies I've used to generate $20 million for my e-commerce clients. Again, I appreciate you watching this video. Hope you got value from it and I'll see you in the next one.